Electromagnetic radiation is classically understood in terms of wave motion, but Hertz threw doubt on the validity of this belief. He noticed that the presence of light made the space between two metal spheres conduct electricity more readily. Light gives energy to the electrons on the metal's surface, which allows them to break free. This is called the photoelectric effect. It was discovered that when the intensity of the light increased, the number of the electrons released also increased, but their kinetic energy did not. This was inconsistent with the wave theory of light. The wave theory of light states that the greater the intensity of the light, the greater the energy released from the light source per second. This explains why the number of electrons released is proportional to intensity, but not why the kinetic energy of the released electrons remains constant. Wave theory was also thrown into doubt by the discovery that electrons are not emitted for all wavelengths of light. Planck concluded that light energy is emitted in separate packets of energy. Until this theory was proposed, it was believed that the energy of light was emitted continuously. Einstein used Planck's theory to explain the photoelectric effect. He called the packets of energy photons, and this is how they are referred to today. When the intensity of light increases, the number of photons increases. The energy of the photon is independent of the light's intensity. However, it is proportional to the frequency of the light. This explains Hertz's observations that the number of electrons released increases with light intensity, but the kinetic energy of the electrons released is independent of the light intensity. The photoelectric effect is the name given to the process by which electrons are released from a metal due to energy gained from light. The number of electrons released is proportional to the intensity of the light, and their kinetic energy is proportional to the light's frequency. The energy given to an electron by a photon can be calculated using the formula E equals HF. Not all wavelengths of light cause electrons to be released from a metal. This is because there is a minimum amount of energy required to release a delocalized electron against the pull of positive ions. This minimum energy is called the work function. F0 is the threshold frequency. This is the minimum frequency of light necessary for the photons to have sufficient energy to release any electrons. Classical wave theory states that V equals F lambda, so F equals V over lambda. F is inversely proportional to lambda, so the threshold wavelength is the maximum wavelength at which the photons of light will contain sufficient energy to release electrons. Because quantum theory deals with occurrences at an atomic level, the quantities involved are very small. The work function value is therefore often given in electron volts. The energy of an electron volt is equal to the charge of an electron multiplied by one volt. One electron volt has a value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. The fact that the photoelectric effect revealed waves to have a particulate nature led de Bruyne to hypothesize that all particles could in turn display wave behavior. De Bruyne suggested that any moving particle has a wavelength which can be calculated. All physical quantities can be described in terms of either waves or particles. This phenomenon is commonly known as wave-particle duality. Waves and particles are linked through the relations 
E equals HF and lambda equals H over P. A couple of years after de Broglie suggested the theory of wave-particle duality, it was discovered that a beam of electrons directed at a crystal, the atoms of which behave as a diffraction grating, produces a ring diffraction pattern on a screen, similar to that produced by X-rays. This proved de Broglie's theory, as the electrons seem to leave the filament as particles, pass through the diffraction grating as waves, and arrive at the screen as particles. It is therefore fair to conclude that all matter has a dual nature. If more energy than the work function is given to an electron, it will not just be liberated from the metal, but will also have kinetic energy. Einstein's photoelectric equation allows this kinetic energy to be quantified. Photon energy equals work function energy plus the maximum kinetic energy of the electron. In 1911, Bohr suggested that atoms contain a number of defined energy levels. The energy of an atom is the energy of the electrons which orbit its nucleus. Electrons cannot exist between these specific energy levels. When bombarded by other atoms or electrons during processes such as heating, the electron may absorb energy in quanta of certain amounts. Having gained this extra energy, the electron is now said to occupy an excited state and exists in a higher energy level. The amount of energy needed to excite an atom is called the excitation energy. Specific energy levels vary for each element. When an electron enters an excited state, it becomes unstable and returns to a lower energy level after a minute period of time in order to regain stability. The energy lost when the fall occurs is emitted in the form of electromagnetic radiation. This can be substantiated using evidence from atomic line spectra. A gas is placed in a discharge tube at a low pressure, and a high potential difference is set up across it. The high potential difference enables atoms to move into a higher energy level. The atoms then fall from this excited state, emitting electromagnetic radiation in the process. By passing the emitted radiation through a prism or diffraction grating, the emission spectra can be seen to consist of well-defined separate lines. The separation of these lines is experimental evidence for the existence of discrete energy levels in the atom. <laughs>